Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. We are finally back from Computex and it is time to get into our more regular content. Today's video is one that I have been planning for a while now but somehow never seem to get around to doing. Uh, since the release of the second generation Ryzen processors, many of you have been requesting a benchmark comparison between the various AMD chipsets, in particular the X470 and B350 chipsets. And when looking into this, I decided to go one step further and include the A320 chipset as well. For this comparison, we will be looking at stock out of the box performance with the Ryzen 7 2700X using the Wraith Prism box cooler, along with DDR4 3400 memory. In addition, we'll also be tightening up the memory sub timings to see if the optimized memory performance differs from one chipset to another. Previously, we found very mixed results when testing memory performance on the A320 motherboards, often finding them to be considerably worse than similar priced B350 boards. However, all boards have now been updated to support second gen Ryzen processors and with that also received improved memory support. Representing the A320 chipset is the A320M Pro 4, ASRock's most premium A320 motherboard, which currently retails for $65 US. The board officially supports 105 watt TDP processors. That means the 2700X should work without an issue. And ASRock says you can even get away with using a liquid cooler, which typically means less airflow over the board's VRM heatsink. For those wondering, the board features a three plus three phase VRM, and the V-Core VRM has three phases with a doubling of everything. For the B350 chipset, we used the Fatality AB350 Gaming K4, and for the X470 chipset, the Mighty X470 Tai Chi Ultimate. The only chipset missing from this comparison is the X370, but we've already established that there's really nothing separating the B350 and X370 chipsets in terms of performance and memory support. So with that, let's jump to the results. First up, we have the memory bandwidth results, and as you can see, the performance is much the same across the three boards tested, even with the enhanced sub timings. I have to admit, I was quite shocked to see the A320 board working perfectly fine with the Titan timings, particularly given that this exact motherboard wasn't that willing to accept faster memory with the previous BIOS revisions. The Cinebench R15 scores were also much the same, and we saw no real increase in score when tuning the memory sub timings. Moving on to the Corona benchmark, and here we see that the stock performance was exactly the same on all three motherboards. However, the tuned memory sub timings did lead to slightly better performance on the X470 and B350 models, while the A320 was around 3% slower. The last application test we ran was Excel 2016 using the Monte Carlo workload. Here the X470 board did complete the test in the shortest period of time, though I should point out that less than a percent separated the fastest and slowest result. Now for some gaming benchmarks, and starting with Assassin's Creed Origins, we see little to no difference between the various boards. Also, tuning the memory didn't really seem to help improve performance in this title. Next up we have Ashes of the Singularity, and here we do see some variation in performance. Stock the X470 board was up to 2% faster than the A320 board, not a lot in it though as we were only seeing a 1-2 to two FPS difference. The margin grew slightly with the tweaked memory sub timings, and now the X470 board was as much as 5% faster, though when compared to the B350 board, we did only see a 1 to 2 FPS difference. Battlefield 1 performance was virtually identical on all three boards, and the tuned memory offered a nice 10% performance bump, again for all three boards. This time when testing with Far Cry 5, we see very little difference between the B350 and X470 boards, while the A320 board was often just 1 to 2 FPS slower. Finally, the last game tested was Vermintide 2, and here the A320 board was never more than 2.5% slower than the X470 model, while the B350 board basically offered the same level of performance. Okay, so if you're not planning overclocking, which you probably aren't if you intend on purchasing either the 2600X or 2700X, then a cheap B350 board will be just fine. Evidently, an A320 board will also suffice, but given you are paying just $10 more for an equivalent B350 board, and we've always felt that that's just a more sensible option. Of course, if you're spending over $300 US on a Ryzen 7 2700X or over $200 US on a Ryzen 5 2600X, you're probably budgeting a little bit more than say $60 to $80 US for the motherboard. Also, there are some decent X370 boards currently selling for around $100 US, so if you are after a high quality board, but you do still want something that's quite good value, then I recommend checking out some of the X370 boards that are currently available. The main takeaway here though being that a decent B350 board is able to match a high-end X470 board in terms of performance. The Fatality AB350 Gaming 4 also had no trouble pushing the 2700X to an all-core overclock of 4.2GHz, and with the tuned sub-timings the performance was mighty impressive. 
So that being the case, I have to admit to making an incorrect assumption in my Ryzen 5 2600 versus Core i5 8400 benchmark comparison. In that mega benchmark video, I said the following. At the very least, the overclock configuration will require an upgraded cooler, but for the results shown here, you'll also need a quality motherboard and premium Samsung B-Die memory. During my initial second gen Ryzen coverage, I did have some trouble with the high performance memory on 300 series boards with the early BIOS revisions, problems I didn't have with any of the X470 boards tested. With so much additional content to cover after the second gen Ryzen release, it's taken me quite a few months to get back to 300 series chipset testing. I would have got this video out last week if it weren't for Computex, but anyway, it's done now. So to clear up my previous statement, to achieve the overclocking results shown in the Ryzen 5 2600 versus Core i5 8400 head to head, you'll require an upgraded cooler and premium Samsung B-Die memory, but any old B350 motherboard will suffice. Given that you don't actually require a high-end motherboard to take advantage of the Samsung B-Die memory and those tweaked memory sub-timings, that makes the optimized Ryzen setup a little more cost-effective. In my top five best B350 motherboards video, I named the ASUS Prime B350 Plus for $100 US, the best value ATX B350 motherboard available. Today, I still stand by that pick when looking exclusively at ATX B350 boards and at around $40 US than the cheapest X470 models, that is a decent saving. Of course, we do have B450 boards incoming next month, and while they are for the most part just refreshed B350 boards, there might be a new best value option to look out for. In any case, it's great to see memory support continue to improve for the Ryzen processors. And that is going to do it for this one. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content. If you appreciate the work we do here at Hardware Unbox, then consider supporting us on Patreon. You will gain access to our monthly live stream and Discord chat. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.